Breaking news here on NFL Live. We bring Adam Schefter in for the latest on the Washington Commanders sale. All right, Laura, moments ago I was told that there is a preliminary agreement between the group led by Josh Harris, the owner of the 76ers, and Daniel Snyder to sell the Commanders for what would be a record price, $6.05 billion. Now, the deal is not signed. It is agreed to, and other people still can get into the bidding. And the group led by Steve Apostolopoulos still believes it's a part of the process and still is interested in purchasing the commanders. But right now, there is a preliminary agreement in place between the Josh Harris group and Daniel Snyder to sell the commanders. And as we mentioned at the outset of the show, the only question now is who officially buys this team and when the sale is officially processed. But the Snyders are selling this team. They are moving on from Washington. There will be new owners. And it looks like right now it is shaping up to be Josh Harris, but the deal is not yet signed, and there still are levels in certain situations that have to go through before this would become official. Some of the events that led to this point, back in August of 2020, a sexual harassment claim was filed against Snyder in which 42 women claimed that they faced harassment in the workplace. Less than a year later, Washington was fined $10 million as a result of the NFL's investigation into the team's workplace culture. And last year, the Congress House Committee found evidence that Washington underreported its ticket revenue in the NFL. Of course, there is still an ongoing investigation into the commanders. We'll wait and see exactly where that stands in all of this as new ownership is ushered in, no matter who exactly it is. But Mina, along those lines, what does this mean for this organization to be able to take a step in a different direction? It is massive, not just for this team and its tortured fan base, but for the entire NFL. I mean, Laura, we're not talking about the turning of a page here. We're talking about the closing of a book that will go down as one of the most shameful records of any owner in any professional sport, as you laid out there with that timeline, which only touches on some of it. I mean, with Daniel Snyder, we're talking about an owner who oversaw a culture in Washington that was toxic and predatory. This was widely reported on and investigated, who has been accused of directly facilitating that culture, who has been accused of sexual assault himself, by the way, um, as well as reportedly harassing and intimidating witnesses and reporters. An owner who is currently facing federal investigations for some of these charges, as well as the financial misbehavior, as well as a new new, not like another investigation from the NFL itself. And that is just one thing I do want to highlight, because even if this sale does go through and Daniel Snyder is no longer an NFL owner, I do think it is imperative that the NFL finishes that investigation and releases it, because if they do care about transparency and some of the values that they've been espousing as they continue with this investigation, releasing it becomes paramount in my mind. I agree, Mina. I think we need to see that report come out, and so we'll keep an eye on that for sure. You know, Keyshawn, you're somebody who played in the NFL. You know what it means to be a part of this league, and you think about the way that the commanders have been viewed and all that's happened, as we've outlined here. What do you think it means to be able to take a fresh step forward for the organization with new ownership? Well, I think that the individuals with in that building can now not walk on eggshells. They now can feel fresh and a new start. It ignites and energizes the fan base. Not only that, when you talk about the, the, the stadium that they're playing in, it also now the surrounding areas of D.C. can now start to focus in on possibly getting a brand new stadium, which was part of what they wanted to do in the past. But with everything looming over them, people were like, no, nah, we're not we're not going to do that right now. So it's a it's like Mina said, everything Mina said is correct and right. Anytime you get this situation off the table and it becomes better, it becomes better for the league, it becomes better for everybody involved. It reminds me a lot of what went on with the Los Angeles Clippers under Donald Sterling. Once Steve Ballmer took over, it became a totally different energized fan base. People started getting into it a little bit more. In fact, the team got better. So I'm glad that this is potentially on the horizon. It's about time. Hmm. Yeah, I think the team is going to be sold here. And when you had been in that stadium and you talked to people around the league, they were struck by how empty, hollow, and eerie that stadium had become. We saw the railings fall down on Jalen Hurts 
the former Philadelphia Eagles quarterback, yeah. and they brought in a number of employees to help write the organization and correct the situation. And there's some people there that have done some good work in recent years. But there is such a stench from such a long period of time that lingered over this franchise that one of the reasons that the Josh Harris group is bidding on it, that the Steve Apostolopoulos group is bidding on it, is because they believe that this is a sleeping giant that's waiting to be awakened. And all these people around the league could not believe the disrepair that that organization had fallen into. It had once been one of the crown jewels of the NFL, and it had lost its standing as one of the crown jewels in the league. And I think the Harris group, the Apostolopoulos group, they believe they can make the commanders great again. That's what they believe, and that's why they're bidding six-plus billion dollars, a record price in North America, because they believe they could bring this franchise back. And again, I want to just say this one more time. The There is a preliminary agreement right now between the commanders and Josh Harris, but at the same time, the Apostolopoulos group has been told to continue to go on here and to continue bidding. We'll see whether or not that's going to play into the final decision. But again, there is a preliminary agreement right now that exists between the commanders and the group led by Josh Harris. Adam, I want to follow up on what you said about the belief that this team could be brought back to this organization, be brought back yeah. to prominence and, and really awaken that sleeping giant, the value there. Remind me what Dan Snyder bought this team for and how much that value has grown over time despite some of the disarray. Well, Dan Snyder, for all the work that he's done and all the ways that he's carried himself, and you heard Mina detail it pretty well there, he's going to walk away with billions of dollars. Now, there's some debt to pay off that he'll have to handle there, but I don't remember the exact price that he paid, but this franchise has increased in value infinitely. And now the new owners will be in charge of finding a new stadium of which politicians and business people will be happy to work with them. They're going to be viewed as heroes coming in. Whoever buys that team will presume it to be Josh Harris for the time being. They're going to be embraced, welcome. People are going to love them. The bar is so low that True. there's nowhere to go really but is. up for the new owners. It's one of the reasons it makes for such a great purchase. Yeah. Then they're going to move the team. They're yeah. going to be playing in a new stadium. They're in the NFC East. They're in one of the great markets with some of the great rivalries. And that's why this is going to fetch the price that it will. And Dan Snyder's going to walk away, not with millions, but billions. Wow. Billions. This is only just the beginning of this story. Uh, and it, it is remarkable to think about what this actually means. It's so rare to see something like this happen. And just a reminder of how little success Washington had under Snyder's tenure. You see the last playoff win for them, 2005 wild card. We're in 2023 now, fewest playoff wins since 1999. They've only got two of them. Not acceptable for what has been such a proud franchise prior to Snyder's ownership. Let's bring Adam Schefter back in here for more on the impending sale of the Washington Commanders, Adam. Well, Laura, the Finance Committee still will have to approve the sale when it is officially done. That Finance Committee is chaired by Clark Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City Chiefs, and there will be steps that have to go through before this sale becomes official, final, and processed. And we still have to see if the Canadian billionaire Steve Apostolopoulos and his family forges on with its bid or whether it bows out and concedes to Josh Harris, who was actively involved in trying to buy the Denver Broncos last year before they were sold for a then record price of $4.65 billion to the Walton Penner Group. So the Josh Harris group had some experience last summer in bidding for the Denver Broncos. They used that experience here to help try to get into that agreement to purchase the commanders from Daniel Snyder. And you asked before how much Daniel Snyder paid back in the day. Well, he led a group back then in 1999 that purchased the Washington Redskins for $800 million. And some 24 years later, he now is expected to fetch back in excess of $6 billion. If my math is accurate, that would be about a 750% return on his investment, Laura. Yeah, I'm not going to check your math there. I'm going to trust you on that, Adam. And uh, it, it is uh, kind of twofold when you think about it. You think, wow, Snyder is going to stand to make all that money. But it also speaks to the value of this franchise and the investment that 
whomever is able to actually solidify this purchase is going to get. Adam sticking around with us. We've got Mina Kimes and Keyshawn Johnson here as well for this breaking news. And Mina, I'll start with you. You know, you think about the hope for Washington fans right now and, and what they can be excited about. And then also this new ownership group. What does this team yeah. look like for them? What is the state of the commanders that they're going to end up taking over? I actually think the commander's roster looks pretty good with the obvious caveat that quarterback is a question mark. Get to that in a second. But we take a step back. This is a defense that dramatically improved last season, finished top 10 in just about every metric. And then an offense that has one of the more exciting young groups of young receivers in the NFL, good run game. Decent offensive line. You guys might remember they were pushing for a playoff spot mm. with Taylor Heineke last season. So now you get to the question mark, which is who's going to be under center. Um, it at this moment appears to be a genuine quarterback competition between Sam Howell, who was their fifth round draft pick. I feel like that was a steal for them. And then Jacoby Brissett, who played very good football with the Browns uh, last year. And I wouldn't be surprised if with either one of those quarterbacks, they look better on offense this season. So I view this team as competitive this year. Not a true contender because of the quarterback, but, but it's a good roster. It's a deep roster. Um, and I think when they do find that quarterback, they actually do have the potential to be a true threat in the NFC. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.